Hey, what's up? I'm Raspy Randy. Welcome to Benny TV. No, I'm just kidding, guys. What's up? This is Ryan Rizzuti. I'm on my dad's show, Benny TV, which is pretty much my show because I'm on it more than he is. Um, my dad is uh, sick this week. Um, he has... Um, no, I'm not going to make a joke about it. He's, he just has a cold. Um, he'll, you know, wish him a speedy recovery. You know, going to Florida and coming back, you know, it was so hot. Him and my mom, they're like, oh, it was so hot. We were melting. Yeah, it was like 30 degrees here in Long Island. So thanks. Thanks for that. Oh, I'm, I feel so bad for you in the heat. The heat is so terrible. Oh. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Um, this is Benny TV, but it's the Ryan Rizzuti Takeover. Um, I found this on the Google. Shout outs to the Google. Uh, uh, yeah, so my dad's sick. I actually didn't even really plan on being on the show this week because as you can hear, I am Raspy Randy. Um, I have a very raspy voice. I actually lost my voice over the weekend, which was very unfortunate. Um, I will regale the tale to you of how I lost my voice. Uh, it's not that long. I, so this weekend after uh, a long week on Friday night, me and my friends went to a haunted house an amazing haunted house called Darkness Rising in Deer Park. But actually, on my way there, I found out I actually knew the two people running the haunted house. Uh, they both went to Five Towns College with me, um, Kevin Baird and Charles Desjardins. Charlie, I really hope I said your last name right. I probably didn't, and I've known you for like like 10 years, so I'm sorry. Um, but they're two awesome guys that were also uh, film students at Five Towns. Charlie was actually also a teacher. He like he graduated, he did really well. Um, I mean, graduated from student, obviously graduated from student to teacher. Um, and they both run this haunted house for charity. Um, I believe it was Kevin's, uh, like, baby. I remember he used to talk about it in college. Probably doesn't even remember. Like, oh, I didn't even know where I told Ryan about that. Like, you did once, you know, when we, we had a conversation that one time. Uh, and I, I finally had a chance to go, and I brought a bunch of my friends. And it's Darkness Rising. It's in Deer Park, right across from the Tango Outlets. Uh, it's at the Strike Force Airsoft and NYZ Apocalypse, if you've ever heard of that, which is like laser tag with zombies. I've heard great things about it. I actually haven't got, gotten a chance to go, but I want to go soon. Uh, don't mind my raspy randiness. I'm going to drink more water. I've been drinking like straight lemon water today. I actually bought lemon juice at 7-Eleven. I've just been pouring it into my water. Uh, I don't think it really did anything, but, you know, maybe it did. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so Darkness Rising, Haunted House, it's I going for at least another till next weekend, I'm sure. Um, they usually do the weekend right after Halloween, so I, I would think after Halloween they would probably be open a little bit for a couple days. Um, you can check the website. Um, by far one of the best haunted houses I've ever been to, and I'm not saying that because I know them, I'm saying that because these two guys really know how to put on an amazing show. They know how to design an amazing haunted house. It's themed. I don't want to ruin anything for you. There's some great tricks. There's some really awesome scares. I think they put on an amazing show. Uh, the amount that they're able to do, and maybe it's just me, but going to school with them, I can see where they got, like, you could tell, like, for at least I could tell that filmmakers made this and they really put a nice cinematic experience. It has a very cinematic, like, video game come to life experience that is exactly what you want in a haunted house. And I, it's an amazing haunted house. It's like something that you'd want to go to, like, Universal or something to go to. It's, I can't recommend it enough. Darkness Rising in Deer Park. I highly recommend the haunted house. It's, uh, it's really great. I highly recommend it. Um, I went to the haunted house. I got super spooked, super scared. And that was my plan because right after, me and my friends went to go see the new Halloween, the 2018 Halloween. So we went to see Halloween. I'm super spooked. Like, my, my hair was standing. All my hair was standing. I was, like, freaking out. I thought I saw a ghost. It was fucking amazing. Sorry for the language. This is, a, this is an adult. This is for children, too. This is a family show. Uh, so I went to see Halloween with my friends, RPX, put out the big bucks, you know, that's like Regal's IMAX, you, you show out the big dollar dollar bills. 20 minutes into the movie, somebody pulled a fire alarm, the entire theater got evacuated. Every single screen, every single theater got evacuated. So 
I was not drunk. I was sober as a ghost, but I felt like I saw a ghost because I was really spooked and I was super hyped up to get scared even more because I just went to a haunted house and I'm seeing Halloween. So I kind of incited a riot and I screamed so loud that I blew up my vocal cords. I'm going to keep it PG. I'm not going to really curse, but I did curse a lot because as people who watch this show and people who know me know, I go to movies constantly. Minimum, usually once a week, at least three to four times a month. That's like a slow month. That's like nothing really good came out that month. And two of those movies were probably really terrible. But I go all the time. This has never happened to me before. The worst time before this that I've ever had at a movie was when I saw Baywatch. And other than the fact that I paid to see Baywatch, they showed the trailer for Baywatch instead of the movie. So the trailer played and then the lights went up. But somebody walked in to check the theater and we were like, hey, what are you doing? You know, that's the trailer. We we paid money to see the real movie. If I want to see the trailer, what do we want on YouTube? So they fixed that right away. So I never had anything this bad where I actually had to leave the theater in the middle of the movie. And let alone, you know, Halloween 2018, I was super spooked already. I was all hyped up. So that is, that's uh, what happened. And I was very upset. And I was saying, F Regal. This did happen at a real movie theater. This, I was like, this wouldn't have happened if I went to AMC. Uh, you ain't shit, Regal. I think I said a couple times. Uh, what else did I say? I said, uh, oh, you ain't got your own movie pass. AMC got movie pass. You ain't got shit. Um, and then I said, you ain't shit. Um, then I started turning it into the Red Sox and the Yankees. And I guess, you know, I have some, un- you know, I hate the Red Sox. I'm a Yankee fan. You know, this, here's my Yankee tattoo with the Italian flag colors. If you don't like it, you know, you can go live in a dumpster somewhere. I don't really care. So I started being like some Red Sox pan- fan Pulled the fire alarm. I'm trying to watch Halloween. After Red Sox. Red Sox suck. This wouldn't have happened if Joe Girardi was still managing the Yankees. F you, Aaron Boone. You're a trash bag. I've been saying all week that Aaron Boone is a trash bag and a garbage man. I've never liked Aaron Boone. It's not like, oh, you're, you're a sore loser. You guys got 100 wins and Aaron Boone's a good manager. Aaron Boone got a lucky hit in 2003 and has been coasting off that for 15 years. And I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because I'm the only person that sees that. He was a commentator on ESPN and it was so bad nobody was watching ESPN baseball games. And then they go, oh, let's let this guy manage a baseball franchise. No, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. WWE wouldn't have written something that silly and they made Eugene. Don't get me started on Aaron Boone. So I, I had a sweatshirt. I was picking it up, throwing it down, picking it up. And I blew up my vocal cords. Somebody, I was actually like, I was getting chants going. People were behind me. There was a lot of people who were all upset. A security guard actually nicely came over to me and told me to calm down. I did. I, like, I snapped right out of it because I was sober. So like the second someone told me to stop, I stopped. And by that time, my voice was already gone. Um, so that is the story of how I lost my voice this week was screaming at the top of my lungs outside of a Regal Cinemas because 20 minutes into Halloween, somebody pulled the fire alarm. And Aaron Boone is a trash bag. And it's, it doesn't have to do with him not winning the World Series. It has to do with the fact that he had a lucky hit 15 years ago. And Aaron Boone sucks. You know, like, hey, people don't like A-Rod, right? We wouldn't have A-Rod if it wasn't for freaking Aaron Boone because Aaron Boone goes, oh, I don't care that I'm a big Major League Baseball player make millions of dollars. I'm going to go play basketball in the offseason and tear my leg open or however he injured himself. And then he voided his contract and we needed a third baseman and that's why we traded for A-Rod. Nobody thinks about that. I'm just over here. Stri- this is just the facts. Like, this is like Alex Jones if he made sense. The wa- they're not turning the frogs gay in the water, but Aaron Boone is a trash bag. I also want to say I, I don't like Alex Jones. I was a joke. I don't want anybody to be like, oh, Ryan's pro Alex Jones. That guy's a trash bag too. But we're not here to talk politics. We're here to talk about Halloween. 
Because that is what I saw. And I did get back into the theater and was able to actually finish the movie. And I have seen the new Halloween. It's the 11th Halloween film, but chronologically now is the second Halloween film. Because this Halloween film, although it's called Halloween, is Halloween 2. It's supposed to be like like H2O was Halloween 20 years later. This is H4O. Halloween 40 years later. Man, me talking about Aaron Boone does not help my vocal cords. You can really tell how much I hate Aaron Boone. You can, my, my friend Kyle was with me when they announced that he was the manager, and I was just sitting in a room with him, screaming at my phone for like 10 minutes straight. Like cursing. My face was like redder than it usually is. Like it looked like my like I was like a pimple about to explode. I hate Aaron Boone. I, I didn't like him as a player. I think his brother's nice. I like Brett Boone. If Brett Boone was managing the Yankees, I'd be perfectly fine with it. I like Brett Boone. He played for the Mariners. He was a good second baseman. He wasn't a trash bag like his brother Aaron. Aaron Boone, I'm sure you're a nice guy. I just don't like you. I'm sorry. But back to Halloween. So Halloween is the film I saw this week. Jamie Lee Curtis back in the role. Michael Myers. I, I'm just going to go over and say it. I very much enjoyed this movie. Um, there is mixed to positive reviews of this movie. Mostly people like it. There are some people who don't like it. Uh, I don't need these. It's just me. I'm not, there's nobody else coming in. There's nobody. It's just me. So uh, I very much enjoyed this movie. I think it's exactly what you're expecting. Um, fun fact about this movie, it was written by Danny McBride, Eastbound and Down, Danny McBride. Uh, he, he co-wrote it with David Gordon Green, who directed Pineapple Express, along with Stronger and a ton of other movies. He's a very good filmmaker and almost too good of a filmmaker to make a Halloween slasher film, which I think is one of the reasons why it's a little better than you'd expect. It's a very good movie, but it's exactly what you expect from a oh hey charlie you're watching the show i actually just shouted you out and uh because I, I i was talking about darkness rising and how amazing it was so i just wanted to let you know that i did a big plug for, for the haunted house i think it's amazing um i had an amazing time me and my friends had an amazing time everything you did the twists and turns was completely fantastic and i'm trying to actually get people to go, come again because i really i loved it i thought it was fantastic so again darkness rising deer park amazing haunted house i highly recommend it um, but now I'm going to go back into talking about Halloween. I do that. I have ADD. I just go all over the place. Um, but uh, so I thought Halloween was a fantastic, a fantastic movie. There is things to gripe about, but it's a Halloween film. It's a slasher film. And let's be honest, most of the Halloween films aren't that good. There's good kills. There's fun to be had with them. But they're not good movies, except for the first one and H2O, and Halloween 2 can be fun. We don't need to talk about the remakes. You know the remakes, Rob Zombie. If you like Rob Zombie, you'll like the movies. If you don't like Rob Zombie, you're not really going to like the Halloween films, the his Halloween films. But there's some really bad Halloween movies. Halloween 6 with Paul Rudd. You probably didn't even know he was in it. Curse of Michael Myers. Halloween 5 is very bad. Halloween 4 is fun. Halloween 3 is very different. They were trying to make it into an anthology series. Didn't really work, but people, that's like a cult classic now. And then you have this one, which is, takes out 2 through 10. None of those exist. Only the first one and the new one. I think what they did was great. A lot of fun can be had. I thought the cast was fantastic. A little boy... Uh, Julian in the film deserves his own spinoff. He's great. He's like exactly what you want from a little kid in a horror movie. Um, I think Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, is amazing. There's some complaints for people that she's not in the movie enough. I think that she isn't in enough because it's not just her story. It's the story of the Strode, the, the Strode family. And the new generation with the old generation coming together. And I thought they did a great job with that. Yes, there are things to gripe about. There's some twists that aren't very good and probably is the weakest part. There's a big twist that probably is the weakest part of the entire film. Although it is a very good 
uh, movie. That twist does kind of hold it down a little bit. I happen to like it because I like the dichotomy of that character in the twist compared to another character in the series. So I kind of enjoyed that and the way they took that. But I can understand why some people wouldn't. I thought that the granddaughter and her friends were good, although mostly underwritten. I would say that they did very good of sh of being a little bit more than a typical slasher character, in my opinion. Uh, Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon's son, I forget his name, but I'm pretty sure his last name is Robbins. He's in it as one of the friends, uh, and he is really good. He's also in Blockers, the John Cena film. He actually is the, girl, the guy dating John Cena's daughter. He's very funny in that movie, and he kind of stood out to me in Blockers. So when he showed up in this, I, I kind of already liked him, and I thought he, in the little bit he is in the movie, he's not in a lot. In the small role that he has, I thought he did a good job. I liked most of the kids. I liked most of the cast. Um, I thought they did a really good job with it. Uh, there's, I'm saying, I'm a lot. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Judy Greer playing Laurie Strode's daughter is fantastic. Laurie, uh, Judy Greer is in... Ant-Man the Wasp as Paul Rudd's ex-wife. She's in Jurassic World. She's in a lot of films. Judy Greer's a great actress. Very underappreciated, I would say. And she does a very good job in this film. Jamie Lee Curtis is always amazing. She's Jamie Lee Curtis. If you haven't seen a film with Jamie Lee Curtis, you're probably not watching this show because you live under a rock somewhere. So I don't know why I'm even bringing that up. Jamie Lee Curtis, Freaky Friday, True Lies, my favorite Jamie Lee Curtis film. Other than, of course, Halloween. And many others, Trading Places. Many other great Jamie Lee Curtis movies. She's a, a brilliant actress who only does certain roles. And she only did this film because she liked the script. She liked the idea. She liked what they were doing. And John Carpenter was got involved. I don't know if he got involved before or after her involvement. I think after. But he maybe the same time. Because I know he produced it, I think. He has like an EP credit on it. I know it was produced by Blumhouse, who is the premier horror uh, production company now. They did the Insidious films, Happy Death Day, which I actually saw for the first time this weekend. Many other films. You just look up Blumhouse, the Purge franchise. Uh, Paranormal Activity, they do as well. They're a, uh, they're a great horror production franch uh, franchise company that knows what to get out of these movies and how to make horror films correctly. You may not like all of them. I don't like all of them. But they're leaps and bounds above most horror production companies. Also, I would say that the music is some of my favorite score. One of my favorite scores this year. It's done by John Carpenter, the director of the original franchise, who did the score of the original. And it really feels like a Halloween film more than most because of how good the music is. And it feels like a very great horror film because the music does enhance 90% of the scenes, I would say. I don't have much negative to say about the film other than some characters are underdeveloped. There's more that they could have added. There's some nitpicks. I would say most of my problems with the film were nitpicks, personally. There are some people who feel differently than I do. I very much enjoy it, and I think if you like Halloween movies or you like slasher films, you'll probably enjoy it. No going in that it's a direct sequel to the first one. None of the other films are canon. And in this chronology, because it was revealed in the second film, not in the first film, Lori is not the sister of Michael Myers. They are not related in this movie. Which, that can be a big turn off to some people. Know that going in. Don't go in being like, wait, why aren't they related? Why aren't they bringing that up? Because they're not. They say, they make a joke of it that it's a myth. That that never actually happened. So know that going in. I very much enjoyed it. You may not like it. I very much enjoyed it. It's my opinion. It's also my show. So I can say what I want. Like Aaron Boone's a trash bag manager. But, I really, I really, uh liked the uh i really liked the movie i re very much enjoyed the film i highly recommend it and that's my review of halloween i'm going to talk a little bit like i said i didn't really know i was doing the show today because of my voice 
So this, a lot of this I kind of wrote just when I got here like an hour ago. I always do this. I almost dropped my mic. So I'm just going to, the battery pack, not the mic. It's connected to me. It's in my skin. Uh, I wrote a couple of things down, some news and stuff I wanted to talk about on the show. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about um, before I get into that, and I showed it before, and I have a, uh, I'll show the flyer again. Uh, I have a fundraiser. My family has a fundraiser. My, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, my family uh, has a foundation uh, run by my cousins, uh, Thomas and Melissa Honorado. Um, the TKO Strong Foundation is uh, for their child, uh, Thomas Kevin Honorado. That's TKO. Uh, he has, uh, since he was born uh, five years ago, he has uh, microvillage inclusion disease, which is always hard for me to explain. They always explain it to me, and it's hard for me, but it's a very rare intestinal disorder that he lives with. He has to go to Boston in order to receive medical care. They go all the time to Boston. They live here on uh, the island, on Long Island. Uh, it's very expensive. They're trying to fund a cure, trying to find a cure. It's a very rare disease, but there are a lot of infants that suffer from this. And it's something me and my family are very passionate about. Uh, I always try to help them if I can. I, sometimes I'm not always a help, but I try because I love them. And I'm an only child, so I always say Melissa and her sisters, uh, her sister and her brother, uh, are family, are family to me, and they're the closest thing I have to brothers and sisters. So I always try to help them if I can. Um, Dan, if we can get the flyer up for the uh, show, hopefully the one with. This is the fundraiser. It's this weekend at Plat Douche. Uh, I might say that wrong. Who knows? Uh, beer Garden in Franklin Square. It's from 2 p.m. to probably sundown, roughly. Uh, rain or shine. Beer Garden is indoors in case it rains. There's going to be stuff for the kids. There's going to be stuff for adults. There's going to be all sorts of raffles and stuff going on. It's a lot of fun. I will be there. My family will be there. It would mean a lot to me. If you could make it, it would mean a lot to my dad if you could make it. Uh, any little bit counts. Uh, if you can, if you can't make it, you want to make a donation. By all means, we'd very much appreciate it. Uh, TKO Strong Foundation. That's the uh, name of the foundation. You can look it up. We're a proper foundation. We have all the proper things to be a amazing, amazing foundation. And I really hope you guys can make it out. You can come back to me. Uh, we showed that a lot. I wanted to get it, that out as much as I possibly could. So if if you can. If you can make it this weekend to Franklin Square to come to the uh, fundraiser, it would be amazing. I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you there. Thank you guys in advance. Now I'll talk about the rest of the stuff. I just really wanted to talk about that. I meant to talk about it last week, but if you watched the show last week, I was kind of under the weather, and I took Benadryl without realizing that it was like it would make me very drowsy. And I was like halfway through the show, you could see me like, like, uh... So I didn't have a chance. I just was like, I got to get off. I got to get out of there as quick as I could. So I didn't actually get a chance to uh, bring that up. So I wanted to. It's this Saturday. It's this Saturday, 2 o'clock, Franklin Square, Platouche, uh Beer Garden. Please come if you can. Really appreciate it. I'm, strain I'm straining to say this to you with my raspy voice because I am the Crypt Keeper. I just really wanted to do that. So, yeah, I really appreciate it if you guys could make it. Thank you so much. Now, I'll just go right into the next topic. So, uh, Daredevil Season 3 came out this week. I only got to see the first three episodes. It's amazing. I love it. From what I'm told, it only gets better with each episode. It's a little bit of a slow burn to get started, but everyone that I know, that I know people that have watched most of the season already and they're in love with it they say it's on par with season one i personally love season two i love most of the marvel shows two got canceled this week and i'll, I'll talk about that too 
But I want to say that Daredevil Season 3 so far is really great. And I think if you like Daredevil, you're going to really like this season. It's really great so far. What they're doing with Bullseye and Kingpin is great. Vincent D'Onofrio is a powerhouse who deserves an Emmy for this show for playing the Kingpin. He's so good. He's one of the best comic book villains. He is the Kingpin. He's more the Kingpin than the animated Kingpin in the Spider-Man show when I was a kid. And those are like godlike. Like people love the Joker, but it's like, oh no, Mark Hamill's joke is the best. And the Kingpin, although not as it's not exactly the same, was very highly regarded. Kingpin was only in the movies played by Michael Clark Duncan, and I love Michael Clark Duncan, but he and he's not bad, but he didn't do the Kingpin justice, in my opinion, in the Daredevil movie. But Vincent D'Onofrio on the show, by far one of the best villains ever. Ever. Put him right up there. Top television villains. Because he's, it's a TV show. Even though they feel like 13-hour movies, it is a TV show. By far one of the top villains, though, I will say. Also, now, yeah. So, Daredevil, watch it. Let's talk about the other shows. Luke Cage... Iron Fist both got canceled. There will not be a season three of either show. I think this is one of two things. I think this is this is mostly speculation on my part and things I've read online. It's probably Disney trying to keep them for the streaming app. Or they're canceling it because they're going to make a Heroes for Hire show. Just combining the two. Which is what they should have done. They should have just not made season two of Iron Fist. And just brought him into Luke Cage. And done Luke Cage Heroes for Hire as like season three. I guess they wanted to just cancel the shows. And you can do that with these shows. Like Defenders is almost like a set, a, another season to all those shows. But it's a separate show. So if they, so they might come out in like a month. And be like we're doing Heroes for Hire with Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Or maybe Disney's going to save it for their streaming service. Because they're coming out with that streaming service. And they're making a big deal about that. They have that John Favreau show coming out, the Star Wars show, The Mandalorian, which George Lucas has been heavily involved with helping. And it's going to take place between episodes uh, six and seven. So it's in that golden era that we know nothing about right now. So that's pretty amazing. And it's going to be about a Mandalorian, which if you know a little about Star Wars... Boba Fett is a Mandalorian. Django Fett's a Mandalorian. So it would be that sort of. It would be a bounty hunter. We don't know who's going to play it. There's rumors that Pedro Pascal is going to be the Mandalorian. We have no idea who it's going to be. It could be, a no, it could be an unknown. It could be a very well-known actor. We won't know until they announce it. I'm very excited for that show. Disney streaming app has a lot of big things they're working on. They're also developing uh, characters from the MCU, from the movies, that they want to develop into movies, but... Don't think it will really work as a movie. They're going to make miniseries of on the Disney streaming app. They're going to do Loki. They want to do a Scarlet Witch one. They There's rumors of doing Falcon and Hawkeye, which I would love. We'll see how that goes. But I think it would make sense for them to bring Heroes for Hire over because that's something that's loved by the fans is Luke Cage. Not so much Iron Fist. But people love Luke Cage. Some people don't, but people do really, really enjoy Luke Cage. And they love the character. But even people who don't like the show say the character is great. And the character of Iron Fist, I think, is better when he's on screen with Luke Cage, in my opinion. On Defenders, he was better with Luke Cage. And the episode they did of Luke Cage together was one of the best episodes of the whole season. And the best the best episode of anything featuring Iron Fist this year. Yeah, I said it. Iron Fist season two. Go hang out in the trash bag with Aaron Boone. I had friends trying to convince me that show was so good. They're like, no, man, you got to watch. You got to watch Iron Fist. It's so good. They did it right. Iron Fist season two sucks. I'm sorry. It sucks. Don't watch it. Watch Daredevil. Watch Haunting a Hill House. I hear it's amazing. I I actually... Haven't gotten a chance to watch the whole thing of Hill House TV series done by Mike Flanagan, starring Timothy Hutton and an ensemble cast. I hear it's one of the greatest horror shows to ever be made. I have not watched one scene yet. 
So that's all speculation. I'm very much looking forward to watching it. I actually want to really like sit down and dedicate time to watching it. Because that's not something you can like half watch. You got to really. That's the reason why I didn't fully watch Daredevil. I'm just like, you know, coming out being sick. lost my voice. You know, I have a life. So I didn't really get a chance to watch it. All More than the three episodes that I did. Because when I would watch it, I'd just fall asleep. Which isn't a fault of the show. It was a fault of me being tired. But I would recommend watching Daredevil based on the three episodes. And I can't wait to watch more. And I can't wait to watch Haunting of Hill House. Although I'm probably going to have to watch that in the daytime. Like with my cat next to me. And like a flashlight and a baseball bat. Because I hear it's really spooky. Don't mind that. That's my shirt rubbing against my microphone. Uh, Other things I want to talk about is they just released the review embargo just lifted for Bohemian Rhapsody, which comes out next week. Not this week. Next week. Nothing really big's coming out this week. You got some weird submarine movie with Gerard Butler called Hunter Killer. That's probably going to be bad, but I might go see it because I'm weird. That's coming out, but the next big movie coming out is Bohemian Rhapsody, and the reviews just started coming out. 30 reviews so far on Rotten Tomatoes as of like 30 minutes ago, and it has a 53%, which is middling. It's mixed. There's 53% is very mixed. But a lot of reviewers that I like are saying it's their favorite movie of the year. And most of the reviews that don't like it are saying how great Rami Malek is in the movie. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One thing that I did see from a lot of reviews, even people who did like the movie, is saying Mike Myers is terrible in the movie. Mike Myers, the actor, not Mike Myers, the serial killer from Halloween that I talked about earlier. Big big things happened in Mike Myers this year. Mike My- This is the year of Mike Myers, 2018. But one reviewer that I like compared him to The Love Guru, which is bad. If you haven't seen Love Guru, watch it. And then come back to me so you can throw water at me and yell at me about why did I, why'd you make me watch that terrible, terrible movie, The Love Guru? And I'll be like, heh, you watch The Love Guru. Ha. That's all I have to say about The Love Guru. So I don't have that much left to talk about. Like I said, the show was kind of put together a little haphazardly this week. If anybody has anything they want me to talk about, you know, we're alive and well in the chat. Again, this is broadcast in Strong Island Television Paradise Studios, Massapequa, New York. We have Laughter Saves Lives coming up at 8 o'clock. We have Could Be You TV coming up at 9 o'clock tonight. We have all sorts of shows on here. Every night there's a different show. There's another movie review show called Unger the Radar that's on on Sundays. And I highly recommend that. We're a little different. They strictly do movie reviews. We talk about a little bit of everything. There's shows where we'll do where we won't talk about movies. Sometimes we'll just talk about different stuff. You know, like we're just, that's the way that my dad likes to do it. That's the way I like to do it. It's like we don't really want to have a strict format. We kind of just want this to be a show where we can kind of do whatever we want. We can talk about life. We can talk about the weather. I can talk about how I lost my voice. I can talk about some movies, some TV shows. I kind of like, like that. It's kind of fun. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please share the show. Let's get some more views. Like the Strong Island Facebook page. Yeah, Rick's holding it down in the chat. Yeah, Rick's holding it down. Nobody else in the chat. Rick's in the chat. You want to know why? Because he's better than you. And he knows it. Because he's in the chat. Holding it down. He got the shout out because nobody else wrote in the chat. Oh, my father wrote in the chat. Because he's sick. But he's holding it down too. Sick man. He wants to talk about his, fa- his third favorite movie, Night of the Comet is getting rebooted from a female director I don't know very much of. I saw it about an hour ago on uh, Bloody Disgusting, which is a great horror website, that they're planning to remake it, but it's a female director. Uh, Night of the Comet, if you don't know about it, is a cult classic horror comedy. Uh, My dad knows a lot more about it than I do, and when he's on the show, I'm sure he'd love to wax poetic about Night of the Comet with me. 
and we can talk a little bit more about the remake when I know more, but they are planning to reboot Night of the Comet, which if you haven't seen, neither have I, but my dad loves it, and he highly recommends it. Also, in the world of remakes, Sci-Fi Channel is in negotiations to buy the rights to the Critters franchise and Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and they're going to make remakes of both of them which may not necessarily be a bad thing because it's sci-fi and those films... Well, Kill Cross from Outer Space is held in like a high regard in the horror world. It's like a cult classic for being a lot of fun. But Critters is Critters. It's just crappy gremlins. So it would be really cool to see. Oh, Khalil went in the chat. Yeah, Khalil's holding it down too. My friend Khalil Young, he's in some band that uh, I'm going to get the name of because I'll give him the shout out. It's like laughing without smiling, something like that. Laughing without smiling. Yeah, I got it right. I remember your band. Yeah, you think I'm a bad friend, Khalil, but I remember your band's name. I actually looked it up after. It's the confirmed. Floor bottle fell. Laughing, laughing without smiling is my friend Khalil's band. They're the best band that you'll ever hear in the moment that you listen to their songs. Uh, Kill Clowns from Outer Space getting remade might be a good thing. It is Sci-Fi Channel, but Sci-Fi is known to do really hokey things like Sharknado, Santa Jaws, stuff like that. So I think Killer Clowns from Outer Space is right in their wheelhouse. So I'm kind of interested in that. Also in the world of horror, supposedly LeBron James is going to produce a remake of Friday the 13th with the original writer. There's been a lot of stuff going on with the rights have been in flux because the original writer has been suing for the rights and he kind of won, but it's still kind of iffy. And it's weird because they're going to remake Friday the 13th, but they might not have the rights to Jason. They might only have the rights to the first movie. So I don't really know how it would work. So that's kind of up in the air. Uh, yes, yes, Monica, Santa Jaws. I saw it in July. It's a sci-fi movie. It's kind of exactly what you think it is. It's about a boy whose grandfather gives him a magic pen because he's a drawer and he's an artist and he makes Santa Jaws, like a little comic book that he made about a, about a shark that ate Santa Claus and now is like an evil Santa Claus. And he gets the magic pen, he draws it, and it comes to life and like starts eating the town. Of course, they live on a town that's like a crappier Long Island where like, everything's on the water and they have like big po- boat parades, but it all looks like crap. And, like, the acting is, like, some of the worst acting you'll ever see. And the effects are really bad. And, like, Santa Jaws has, like, like uh, Christmas tree lights wrapped around him. And he can, like, throw them with his tail and pull you into the water. And, yeah, it's bad. But it, you'll enjoy the hell out of it if you like bad movies. But, yeah, uh, Santa Jaws, that's a real thing. So, yeah. I think that Killer Clowns Out of Space would kind of work in the world of Sci-Fi Channel. But we'll see what happens. We're going to have to wait to find out about that. It is everything you've drunkenly dreamed of. It's exactly what Santa Jaws is. You're going to watch that and you're going to be like, this is the greatest, worst thing I've ever seen. In my opinion, it's better than Sharknado because I think a jaw of Santa Claus is more ridiculous than a tornado with sharks. That's just me. Sharknado's cool. It got redundant after a while. I know there's time travel. I don't I don't keep up. I only saw the first two. Kurt Angle's in one of them. I only yeah, I only saw the first two. I never saw three, four, seven, how many there's a lot of Sharknados. Uh I don't know if I have that much more to say. How much more do I have to... Well, yeah, I'll talk about Happy Death Day. So I saw I watched Happy Death Day because when I saw Halloween, there was a trailer for Happy Death Day 2, which comes out in February, which Happy Death Day came out last year. You might have seen the trailer. It's kind of Groundhog Day meets Scream. It's a girl's birthday, and she keeps getting killed by a killer, and she wakes up and has to relive it over and over again and tries to figure out who the killer is. I never saw it. I always wanted to watch it. Never had a chance. I finally had a chance to watch it because I saw the trailer for the second one and I liked it so much that I was like, I'm going to watch the first movie. The first movie is a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed it. Is it the best movie? No. 
but it's a lot of fun. I The biggest drawback with the film is that it's PG-13 instead of R-rated, and it's a horror film that would have very much been better if it was rated R instead of PG-13. Personally, in my opinion. In my opinion, I think that it would have been better as an R-rated movie. That's the biggest drawback of the movie to me. I think they do a lot of really cool stuff with the concept, which the Groundhog Day concept can get very tedious and annoying because some people, I feel like some movies use it as a crutch. I've seen all sorts of them. I've seen Christmas Do-Over. I don't know if you've seen Christmas Do-Over. With uh, Jay Moore. And it's an ABC family movie where he keeps having to relive Christmas over and over again. It was like a TV movie. And, yeah, it's not good. But that's what I always think of when I think of bad Groundhog Day movies, even though I've seen that movie a lot. And this isn't one of those. I think they did a lot of interesting stuff with the concept. I think adding the scream element did help a lot. And I would recommend Happy Death Day. And I think the trailer for the second one, which I don't know if it's online yet. When I tried to look for it online, I couldn't find it, but they did show up before Halloween. I think it looks great. I'm very much looking forward to it. Let's see if anything else going on in the chat. Nope, nothing else going on. But, yeah, I'll got a little bit more to talk about. Let's see. Yeah, I'll do, I want to reiterate this Saturday we have the TKO Foundations. Uh, we'll throw the flyer up again, Dan. Uh, we have the TKO Foundations f- fundraiser, fall fundraiser. It's this Saturday. If you can make it, greatly appreciate it from my entire family. If you can, if you can come, it would be amazing. If not, it's okay. But I appreciate it more if you came. I don't have that much left to say. So next week, hopefully my dad will be back. Hopefully my voice will be back. We have Laughter Saves Lives coming up next. Laughter Saves Lives live. John Santo came out of the bathroom. It was like a celebrity. John, you want to pop up? Pop up on the screen. Give a wave. Just so they know who I am. Yeah, yeah. This, this down, this one. Down, down, down. Yeah, John Santo. Oh, world's greatest Sorry, impressionist. World's greatest impressionist. Wow, hey, hey, you've been on the show twice. They know me, right? Yeah, they know. Well, no, you've been on three times. because you No, you did four times. You're our most frequent guest. Holy cow. You're our most frequent guest, John. Wow. John Santo, most frequent guest on Benny TV. I'll wave again. And now he's back. I'll be back at some point. I'll he'll, be back. He'll be back, and he will be I'll back. on the famous Benny Gagoon show. <laughs> oh, now we got the Pat Marones. <laughs> Pat Marone shows up. Yeah, this is the man who calls me Baby Gagoots. Baby Gagoots. <laughs> they forget my name all the time because he calls me Baby Gagoots so much. It's great. I'm actually okay with it. <laughs> so they have Laugh to Save Lives live coming up at 8 o'clock. Got to watch it. It's going to be a great show. Could be UTV on at 9 o'clock. I'm going to be behind the scenes of all of it. Stay tuned. That's the show tonight, guys. I really hope you, you liked it. Uh, I kind of was coming up with everything on the fly, so I hope it was pretty good. I hope people who were watching for the first time really enjoyed it. Have a great night. Hey.